Hello everybody, this is Todd. I'm one of Curly's friends. I'm his teammate for the Open. And today we're going to do deck tech of my deck of choice for the Open, which is for modern Arclight Phoenix. So we start out here with our obviously four of creatures. We have four copies of Arclight Phoenix, just kind of the linchpin of the deck kind of thing. Um, does everything you want to do. Rewards you for doing your strategy, your casting spells, drawing cards, discarding cards. Basically your engine card always comes back every turn. Press your Splinter as well. Push your opponent well. Very obvious choice. Next, we have our four copies of Thane the Ice, which is our second our second best threat in the deck. Honestly, sometimes our best threat in the deck. Um, so that's an 04. Nothing to, like, nothing to scoff at. And then when it flip, you're able to flip it so fast, so much pressure out of nowhere. It's like, in one turn, you have an 04, it comes to 7 8 and attacks for 7 damage, whether it be a plane to or your opponent. So there's a lot of pressure on them out of nowhere. Also, clicks with the board, which is very nice as well. Because sometimes you get into situations where your opponent has like six creatures in play, or humans or something. If like one creature in play, you just bounce them all their hand and get in seven damage. Get Phoenix back. Oh, should do really big, big swingy turns. Next, we have our two copies of the newest card from the set from from the for the deck. It's been very good. Is Aria of Flame. Um, this card is basically a snowball effect. Comes into play, they gain ten life. They gain ten life. It kind of sucks at that point. But when you cast your third and fourth instant spell, you're you're already beyond that, and your deck's like all cantrips. So kind of just slowly, slowly snowballs the game away. It gets to like five or six, you're dead in like two or three spells out of nowhere. With like Manamorphos, one of those many free spells you just keep casting, you keep going and going through your deck. And you keep casting spells, and eventually you'll kill them. Next, we have the best card in the deck, the enabler of the whole deck, Faithless Looting. Um, this card is obviously very good, everyone knows that. It's probably bandable and modern for this reason. Um, just draw to this card too, very generic effect. But when you discard two Phoenix, it's all of a sudden very powerful. When my one-minute spell also includes two 3-2 th flyers in the same turn that have haste. It's a lot of pressure to know on your opponent. And also just like, find, get rid of your bad cards, your flood, get rid of lands. When you need to find lands, it finds the lands for you. It's kind of very much a very good card. Um, kind of what you need for this kind of deck. It's very important. Probably the best card in modern right now, in my opinion, that or Hogak. Um, it's kind of insane. For one man, you do all these things. And that's flashback too, because why not? Very good card, Manamorphos. Or, yeah, it's, it's Fatal Sweeting, not bad. Next is Manamorphos. This is one of the other best cards in the deck, because it is a free spell that literally is just free. Two mana of any color, you get back, you draw a card, um, get you closer to the thing in the ice, get you closer to the Phoenix, just coming back. It's another very staply card of this deck. Very obviously in the deck from the very beginning. Very good, um, it's kind of does what you want, cycles through your deck, keeps getting you cards, mana, fuels your spells, fuels your Aria Flame very well. So another generically really good card. Next. We have, obviously, it's modern, so four lightning bolts is very necessary for every modern, every red deck and modern, basically. Staple, one of the best cards I've ever printed, lightning bolt, very good. Let me really explain it. I'm kind of a, um, a guy that's tilt people, so I have one of each different art, as you can see. Sorry for tilt you, I don't mean to. Um, next is Thought Scour, which is a very good card in this deck. Um, the mill 2 is very good most of the time in this deck. Whether it be with um, your phoenixes, hitting your phoenixes, hitting your fatal suitings, hitting your... Cards that you just want in your grave, like your Lava Darts later on, I'll show you. It's just very good at like finding pieces, drawing cards is great, kind of what you want to do with this deck. The deck sees a lot of cards, which is nice. You have a lot of like, air in your deck too, so you can be like two cantrips, you don't feel that bad, and you draw like a relevant spell maybe, instead of drawing another cantrip. So it's a very good card in general. Um, next we have three copies of Surgical Extraction. Um, very important in this format right now, the Graveyard's a very powerful place to be in this format, in Modern. Whether it be your, um... You're hogacking, phoenixing, we expect the graveyard to be shenanigans. It's a very, very powerful place to be in this format right now. Because the graveyard itself is just so good. So we need our main deck interaction to stop it. It's very important. If you don't have this, if you don't have any graveyard hate in your main deck, you're probably doing it wrong right now, in my opinion. Um, it's very important. So my next one is beat you from the, just because you got this much graveyard value accruing there. Whether it be the Fiddler's doing the Phoenixes, the Hogax, whatever they're doing, the card is just very important. So we'll do best in peace in the main deck, that's right too. And generally, you should have like three to six or eight cards in your deck. Some in build up your main deck sideboard. I have for three in the main three in the board. It's a very good number because you don't want too many in your main deck because they're very bad in some matchups. But some matchups are very good, so it's obviously super situational. It's good to board out in the bad matchups too, which is nice. But yeah, three surgicals very important right now. It feels like um, next week we have some more cantrips here. Four serum visions. It's kind of the best blue cantrip in modern. Fixed period is still very good. I mean, it does what it needs to do. Draw cards, cry too. It's great. Very good with your thought scours when they put Phoenix back on top and mill it over, which is nice. Um, just a very good card in general. Again, very self explanatory too. It's just kind of draws a card, does what you need to do. Nothing crazy. Um, next is my favorite card in the deck. 
very powerful effect finale of promise um it's a one card phoenix basically which is very nice um and also when we speak kind of something this by itself which is also a very powerful effect too <sighs> this kind of does a lot um very flexible it can find like, sometimes you find like bolt serum visions that's great for three mana and like a phoenix in the same pair that's a lot of value sometimes you do like mana morphos and or mana morphos and like serum visions that's great too just find a lot of cards sometimes you surgical serum visions surgical sleight of hand whatever you need to do it's very good, very good in general. It's a very powerful effect to do. Um, next we have four copies of Sleight of Hand. Um, another cantrip, generic. We needed, um, originally this was Opt, but it became this over time because of Finale. Just need to find more Instant Sorcery kind of split. Um, that's the reason why you really do this card over Opt because it's the um, difference between Instant Sorcery really matters with Finale Promiser deck. It's very important. You don't want to have like, oh, I can cast and I only have one Instant in my graveyard or, or one Source in my graveyard. Or all instant source what I should say, actually. Um, you want to be able to, like, always guarantee you get full finale hits are the best possible targets, so. That's why it's played over Opt. Um, some people playing Opt again, that might be right. I'm not sure. Haven't tested in quiet entirely yet, but for now, slight hands where, I, where I'd be personally. Next, we have another newcomer from Modern Horizons, which is not a very good card in this deck. Um, Magmatic Sinkhole. Um, kills Tarmogoyfs, Stormag Anglers. Planeswalkers are very scary, like Big Teferi, Little Teferi, Narset. Those are all very scary cards in this, in this kind of deck. Cards that kind of stop your finale from being good, stop your bolts from being good, stop your your cards off from being anything, literally. So like, it's very important to have a way to answer Planeswalkers that are on high loyalty. Because some people just like turn through play an Narset and not do anything with it, and you just like, oh, I can't bolt it. This is a good answer to that. And it's just in general, a very good card. One mana kill spells are always great. Dell, if you don't really care, a lot of your graveyards would be like can chips and stuff you cast around the game that you aren't getting back unless you have like finale. That matters once in a while, but not entirely, so it's not too bad to worry about. Next, another newcomer from Modern Horizons is um, Flame Dart. Or Lava Dart, I mean. Flame Dart, yeah. Lava Dart, um, another very good card. Two spells in one. One mana deal two isn't that bad. You're only playing three mountains right now, so it's kind of scary. Sometimes you have a mountain to flash it back, but it is what it is. Sometimes just one mana is good enough. Like, it's like humans, like killing a Thalia for two mana, flashing back, killing like a Noble Hierarch on the same turn is very good. Um... Sometimes you just go face with this. Like, I don't know where it's like deal four damage, and I know where it's a lot of damage to burst out with somebody. So, rest of explanatory. Next one to the land base. Um, starting out, we have four Spire Bluff Canals. Um, very self explanatory, very good land. Let's play on top of two or fewer lands. It's a very, it's a fast land. They're great. We all know this. Nothing really self explanatory here. Um, next, two copies of Steam Vents. You only play six fetches in your deck, so you don't really want as many um, shocks as other decks do. You have a lot more utility lands, like your fire buff canals are just better than these right now, in my opinion. Because like, your life total right in this deck is very important, because you know where to like, stop like gaining life and like that. And your life total is like, I know it's a resource, but it's still you don't want to die in some matchups. Some matchups will just kill you out of nowhere. So, like Burn, it's a hard matchup with this deck. That two points matters a lot of times. Sometimes you live like three or four life, and it's like, I didn't shock, and that's why I won the game, so... Little things like that. Um, your fetch lands, you have two um, flex, flex spots for, flesh, for fetch lands. My two are, I'd play two flooded strands, I just find it easier. So we'll do a flooded strand and a Pluto Delta, Misty, do whatever you like. I personally just like two flooded strands, my favorite fetch land, one of them. Um, doesn't really matter entirely, it's your own choice. So yeah, two fetch lands. Then obviously the other four fetch lands are going to be the four Scalding Tarns because it's just the best. The, I mean, you fetch your basics, which is nice, fetch either of them. Very important to have. Kind of very needed. Um, very expensive, obviously, but this is what the time magic is. Some cards are very expensive. But without this, it's really hard because you can't fetch basics as much. This is like either basic any time, which is great. You don't have to risk shocking yourself every time. I mean, obviously, if you play on a budget, it is what it is, but this is very good if you have the money for it. It's very much worth it, in my opinion. And then, um, this might not be right, but I'm playing one Fiery Islet right now, a newcomer from Modern Horizons. Um, it's just your life total is very much a resource, and you have so many ways to stop mitigate your flooding with your cantrips, your faithless looting stuff. So you know, I think that has to play like three or four copies of um, the draw card lands, the horizon lands. You can only play one, and it's fine, because you have so many mana sinks later on. It'll be finale, faithless looting, your cantrips. You just always do, want, want your mana. And the one damage over time adds up. It really does. Um, and then we have two basic mountain. Again, basic mountain, pretty self explanatory. And it's crazy here. And three basic. Island, because Island's better than Mountain, this deck. A lot of blue. On to our sideboard. I'm actually one card short right now. I'll tell you what it is when I get there. Um, we have two Force of Negation, because Force of Negation is very powerful, a lot of matchups. Um, 
So I'm just trying to do something very degenerate things and kill you on their, on their, on like a fourth or fifth turn in the game. Whether it be escape shift effects like that, it's very good at stopping that when you're tapped out. But also, this allows you to always have like, this guaranteed answer to things that you're not, like, you might not be able to answer normally. Like, I was playing against um, my friend Mike, and he's playing um, the prison deck, and he's like, turn one chalice, I had a force negation that cha it changed the whole game. It wins you the game in a nowhere game you're supposed to lose. It's very good answering decks trying to do that kind of stuff. It's just a very good card in general. Um, very much worth everything. Great. Best cards, one of the best cards in the deck. Sideboard, I should say. Next, um, we have two copies of Narset Parter of Veils because this card is just actually busted in some matchups. Um, it's not as relevant to the minus matchup because you have, a lot, you have a lot of stuff you don't want to hit, like your um, Phoenix, you want to go to the bottom of your deck, but like, sometimes you just put it on three and it sits there, and they have like, oh, I have, in the mirror action, they have like, oh, Faithless Wood, it doesn't do anything. Just draw, one, draw zero of this card, too. That's terrible. So just blank your opponent's hand sometimes. It's just a very good card. Comes down on three, puts a lot of, kind of molds the game around it. If it sits there for a few turns, you minus it once, it's great. You find a card, it replaces itself, which is great. If not, it probably required at least one or two of their cards to kill it, so did its job. Um, next is the one copy of, Ma of Mathematic Sinkhole on the sideboard. Just for kind of bigger decks, like Jund, Planeswalker decks, decks that are kind of have bigger scary creatures, like Death Shadow maybe too. Um, just a nice solid answer for one mana. Kills most things. But it's a lot of mana, so you want one of your main ones on the side. Next, two copies of Spell Pierce. For more degenerate decks or control decks most of the time. Um, this card is eh at best in my opinion. But it's not necessarily evil because sometimes people are doing really broken things in modern. You have to stop it. And force the case sometimes isn't enough. So you need a little bit more interaction in this in this route. It's my choice Spell Pierce. Some people play the spell. So most rejects I think Spell Pierce is the best of those three. So try to play Spell Pierce. Next we have two copies of Blood Moon. Um, Tron, big mana decks, scary mana decks. Amulet type when you play against that, it's quite and it can end up being lost matchups. It's very good. Um, some people playing unfair magic, you want to make them play fair magic because it does that. And also, sometimes it's when you game by itself. It's like, oh, you play on turn three, don't have any mana. They have a bunch of mountains now, and nothing. So it's very good. Um, one Aria Flame. This should probably be the main deck, honestly. This third copy of it, because I don't know when you ever bring it in. I guess against Death Shadow, I don't know, but it's a very good card. Um, the best card in the deck, in my opinion. It's a good threat, doesn't require the graveyard, doesn't require anything like that, it's just a very strong effect. One Anger of the Gods. For um, humans, aggro decks, like, burn sometimes, and not really as much, but decks are low to the ground, trying to beat you up with creatures, it's very good against. So expensive, sometimes you need a Wrath. Um, it kills your Phoenix, which sucks, but you can buy around it yourself, because you're the one controlling it and casting it. Um, this is where my extra card would be. I'm missing one currently, but um, this would be it would be three ravenous traps because again, you want six pieces of every interaction in this format. Three stars equal three ravenous traps. A great option because ravenous traps great. Um, better than leyline in my opinion because you don't, you don't have to cast it ever. It's cost zero. One leyline sometimes you draw it. I mean, here looting decks don't care as much, but leyline sometimes you draw it. It's just a brick. It doesn't do anything. But it's a great card. I'd play. I I I play a three, but I can't find a third one right now, so it's two for now. But there should be three here. And the last card is one copy of shenanigans. Um, it's very good in some matchups. Not, other decks aren't as big right now, but when they are, this is great against them. Just always want every turn and kill their best artifact. So, yeah, that is um, my deck pack. My, my, my deck tech. Is it Phoenix? Thank you for watching.